Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for coming today uh, for this important discussion on what we as a community can do to help keep our hometown Lowell centers um, right here in, in Lowell. Uh, as all of you now know, a recent proposal uh, by Major League Baseball would essentially eliminate 42 minor league teams across the country, including the Lowell Spinners. Uh, and if finalized, the MLB plan would end the 25-year uh, affiliation between the Spinners and the Boston Red Sox. And so I've heard from so many of you uh, who have called uh, wanting to know what we can do as a community to make sure our voices are heard as these negotiations play out um, this year. I think we all know firsthand that minor league teams provide critical economic and cultural benefits uh, to the communities they call home. Uh, Lowell in particular has felt that uh, since 1996. Uh, and it's important that we have broad, full partnership to put us in a position to be successful in keeping the spinners here. So I just want to thank you uh, all for being here. You know, originally I was going to have um, us go around and sort of introduce mm -hmm. ourselves, but um, uh, I also <coughs> want to be mindful of everyone's uh, time. And I think we all know each other. I'm so happy that the business, the nonprofit, uh, community, uh, the university, everybody is here uh, showing their support for the Lowell Spinners and uh, um, I'd like to just get right uh, right into it. Um, a couple things, um, Dave Heller who has been unbelievable on this issue in terms of mobilizing and organizing folks down in Washington and across the country uh, was, go was supposed to be here today. Uh, his flight unfortunately was canceled. Uh, we're in the very capable hands of uh, General Manager Sean Smith uh, who has been here as nearly as long as the spinners have been here. Uh, and so he'll give uh, the presentation from the, um, from the spinners ownership um, point of view. But at this point, uh, I would like to turn it over to our, our new mayor, uh, John Leahy. As he told the community yesterday upon being voted our next mayor, he is driven by his mission to create a positive, memorable experience for our constituents and offer exceptional, friendly, and helpful city service. As many of you in this room know, uh, John's father, former state senator Dan Leahy, was serving in the state senate when the spinners came to Lowell. I'm sure he's watching down proudly on you, uh, John. But it is my honor to introduce longtime city councilor and former school committee member, Mayor John Leahy, to provide a welcome on behalf of the city. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming today. Uh, obviously, this is a very important meeting. Uh, as Laurie said, my father was part of this uh, from the beginning. Um, and we do not want to lose the spinners. We want to keep them here. This is very important to the community. Um, we're going to fight like hell to keep them here. So we're going to have a good meeting today and get the ball started. Um, I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I'll introduce counselors that are here. Uh, Dave Conway, uh, John Drinkwater, uh, Bill Samaras, and um, I don't know if you'll do that speaking, or everyone knows that. Well, <laughs> <you're laughs> <a city council. laughs> All right, so that's the city councils that are here. I know Rita Mercy is trying to get down here, but thank you for coming, uh, and let's get going on this. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, uh, Next, I would like to um, also uh, has been involved right from the very beginning. Um, City Manager Eileen Donahue has served this community in a multitude of ways. Um, mayor, state senator, uh, city councilor, um, now our city manager. Uh, very impressive record. But back in 1996, when the Lowell Spinners were, uh, you know, when they came to Lowell, she was serving on the Lowell City Council and soon thereafter was elected mayor. So I don't think anybody sort of knows and appreciates the history and the importance and the cultural and economic benefits this team has on the city uh, more than uh, City Manager Donahue. Um, so please welcome our City Manager. Well, thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Trahan. And uh, thank you all for being here for such a really, really important conversation. And I want to thank you for putting this together. Uh, to giving a voice to what we all know and have heard here throughout the city since this first became uh, announced as a possibility. You know, going back to 1996, when my first year on the council, the Spinners came, they were in their temporary home, 
I don't know how many remember, but it was out at Alumni Stadium on Route 38 while this st uh, stadium was being constructed. Uh, and though many may remember that it was somewhat controversial whether it was building the arena or building the ballpark, once this park was built and once the spinners came here, they were embraced 100% by this community and more importantly by the greater Lowell area. So many tens of thousands of families have come here to the city to enjoy the spinners, to enjoy summer. It's kind of become synonymous with what is summer in Lowell, but a wonderful game, wonderful entertainment, uh, and just so meaningful to so many people. Uh, the city has been completely supportive, the city council, uh, and the many city councils that have come before of the spinners and recognize the importance of the spinners to the community. You know, it's more than a game. It's about coming here. It's about bringing people to recognize all that Lowell has to offer, but especially in this park, it's very special. And so, you know, to put a value on it, it's almost impossible, but culturally, civically, <coughs> the pride that this community has is really second to none. And so to have the uh, suggestion that this will all come to an end is truly heartbreaking. I also want to suggest that, you know, when the city was asked to step up to the plate, no pun intended, um, but to improve the field, to improve the lights, to bring them to Major League Baseball's standards, the city didn't hesitate. The city stood up and made those improvements without question. And that was supported by the local officials, it was supported by the community. Over a million dollars was added to bring those improvements. So I think <coughs> the city has demonstrated to the spinners, to Major League Baseball, how much we will be a partner with them. And so it's critically important, but the voices of everybody in this room are so important to bring that message to Major League Baseball in support of our spinners. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, we do have, um, our state delegation represented here today and they've been unbelievable partners uh, in terms of you know communicating with the administration uh, with the governor uh, with uh, with all of the stakeholders in terms of making sure that the spinners stay put um, so with that I would love to just turn it over to uh, Senator Ed Kennedy um, and then representative Tom Golden Thank you. Well, I think that um, as we meet today, we want to keep in mind that we really have two uh, goals in mind. Um, one is to join with uh, Congressman uh, Lori Trahan and with uh, with Sen Senator Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey in, in trying to convince Major League Baseball to abandon their proposal to reduce the number of uh, minor league baseball teams. The, s the second goal that we have to keep in mind is to uh, get the Boston Red Sox to enter into a long-term agreement with the spinners so that we can know for certain um, for years to come that the spinners will remain here and that we won't be dealing with this um, every couple of years. I think that um, what makes Lowell different from other cities, other mill cities um, in the Commonwealth and throughout New England is that when there's a common problem, we all come together. That's the business community. Um, the schools, the city, the state delegation, um, and everybody. And I think that's what makes Lowell be different and what gives Lowell a lot of its strength. And so I, I know that I've, I've had meetings with Representative Golden. Representative Nangle is, uh, isn't feeling well today, so he's not here. I think Representative Baum will probably be here at any minute. But um, with that, I just uh, want to say I want to thank uh, Congress, Congresswoman Trahan for uh, putting this together and all of you for all coming and uh, hopefully we will be successful. And with that, let me just turn it over to Representative. Thank you, Senator. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Congresswoman, thank you very much for taking the, uh, the lead on this. You really have, uh, not just through Massachusetts, but throughout the country. So I ran home really quick, looking for some, some spinners gear. I know. And I have Shut to say, I found my alum. My I, I, alum I, 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 like that I know the chancellor's very happy about that. <laughs> but my spinner shirt doesn't fit any longer after this. Uh, after this uh, Long, long time <laughs> uh, the holidays. We'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say thank you very much um, to so many people that have come before us. I mean, when, when you start thinking about this, when this park opened in 1998, there was a lot of hustle going on throughout the city. I mean, names uh, that people may or may not remember: uh, Cox, Pangiotakis, 
Uh, I happened to be there back in 1995. Um, Nangle, Murphy, Senator Donahue coming, th coming through the door, Eddie Kennedy, who's there now, uh, Roddy Mom, uh, Dan Leahy, who was mentioned earlier. But there was one person that was really making this happen. And I had the privilege, or I should say the <coughs> honor, to work with him. And that is uh, the gentleman that uh, was a consummate gentleman down in Beacon Hill and truthfully made this happen for this park. And that's Ed Lalacha. It was his dream to make sure that this continued. It was his dream, really, to make sure that UMass Lowell, to make sure that the spinners, everything would come together so that we would have good family fun right here in the city of Lowell. And it's interesting, and I'm sure uh, Sean could say this you know, verbatim in numbers right off the top of his head. We're not only you know, providing good family fun for the 110,000 residents, Madam Manager, 112,000 res residents, but there are so many people coming from the surrounding communities <coughs> that love to see what's happening, and they love to see what's happening in Lowell. This is an absolute gem. Uh, I know that Representative Dangle, Representative Mom, Senator Kennedy, myself, We've been in contact with the administration. We've been in contact with Speaker DeLeo, and I know that the Speaker, excuse me, the Senator has talked to uh, the Senate President. Speaker DeLeo being a huge baseball fan, we have your back. We're here to help. Uh, we know that the administration is trying to do everything that we can, and we're just uh, ready to roll up our sleeve, sleeves and, and, and make this happen. So, John, whatever we can do to help you, I know the delegation's got 100% behind you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you again, Congress. Thank you. No, no, no. Stuff. That's great. Um, Thank you so much. I mean, we we uh, we do forget sometimes the hustle uh, that it that it took um, to make sure that we had so many of the um, things in place and the investments that the city has made uh, to ensure that the spinners had a home uh, and a sustainable place, you know, to play. And now it's, you know, the Lowell Spinners is as much a part of this city as the National Park. The Merrimack River, the university, uh, it's really um, has provided an unbelievable uh, night out um, for, for so many people, not just in Lowell, but, but in this region. Um, so just to give you some background um, and bring you all up to speed on how this all came to be, uh, it's been 80 days um, since Baseball America first revealed uh, Major League Baseball's proposal to eliminate 42 minor league teams across the country. Uh, I was on the phone with many of you, uh, obviously I know who the subscribers are, uh, but within days because, you know, the New York Penn League was a part of, of the uh, elimination proposal and that is, um, that is the league that the Lowell Spinners play in. Um, immediately went to the House floor in October uh, to raise awareness with, uh, with my colleagues. Um, within uh, days, I teamed up with a Republican from West Virginia, um, David McKinley, to organize a congressional letter to uh, MLB commissioner. And uh, I have to say, um, I haven't been in Washington serving for very long, um, but I have to believe it is the fastest bipartisan coalition that has happened uh, to date. Uh, in less than a week, we had 106 members, uh, Republicans and Democrats, including Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy uh, and our Majority Whip uh, James Clyburn on the letter voicing uh, their, their concern um, uh, over, over the, um, the elimination of these 42 teams. And that has now given um, uh, a lot of momentum for so many other folks. Uh, it's really, the coalition has been very dynamic. It's been built over a very short period of time. But certainly, the senators have now uh, written letters. Our senators, uh, Markey and Elizabeth Warren, who are uh, represented today, jumped right on this issue to voice their concern. Uh, other presidential candidates uh, as well have, uh, have joined in, and governors. Um, the National Governors Association, the governor of Connecticut, um, the governor of <laughs> Iowa, our governor, uh, Charlie Baker, have been so supportive. And so this is a very broad coalition, because I think everybody understands not just the economic impact, but also the psychological uh, and cultural impact that it will have um, on, uh, on their communities. We've, uh, we've started a task force to, um, to, uh, to sort of formalize what we put in the letter and think about thoughtful next steps uh, in terms of all the levers at our disposal um, down in Washington to make sure that as 
Um, the minor leagues and the major leagues uh, continue these negotiations this year that we are uh, at the table and frankly uplifting the voices from, from, our, from our communities. Um, it's not just David McKinley, uh, the Republican from West Virginia on the Save the Minor League Baseball Task Force. But it's also Mike Simpson, um, who is a Republican from Boise, Idaho, and Max Rose, who is a Republican freshman colleague of mine from Staten Island. Uh, and we are currently talking about next steps. Um, I don't get too far ahead of myself to say exactly what could be in uh, or on or off the table. Um, but as many of you know, uh, right up until 2018, or as recently as 2018, um, you know, the Major League Baseball received a, a sweetheart deal in terms of getting an ex exemption from the Fair Labor and Standards Act. And so, you know, we are, uh, we're kind of talking about all of um, the, the tools in our, in our toolkit, if you will, um, to make sure that, you know, this partnership is, um, is, uh, is one that continues and that the voices of our communities are heard as, as these negotiations continue. I think what's most important is um, every community, I think, is probably having meetings like this um, because, you know, people are anxious. Um, but this is a, this proposal by Major League Baseball is, um, is one that essentially forfeits the connection that they have with the communities that have been so committed to helping nurture and help develop uh, the talent um, that we see uh, in major league teams across the country today. Uh, but it's not just about um, uh, talent <laughs> development, although I will say, I've, I, you know, we all know, we've seen some of the big names uh, here uh, at the Lowell Spinners, which is sometimes you know, families' only opportunity to see professional players of this caliber. Um, but it's also about keeping America's national pastime national. Uh, you know, we here in Lowell, there are plenty of families who come uh, to see a game who can't go to Fenway Park uh, because it's just not in their budget. Uh, and then you take a, a state like Iowa, which stands to lose three teams, three minor league teams. There is no major league um, uh, team that folks can go to. So baseball uh, just evaporates um, from from that state, and that is not uh, that is not the brand. Um, uh, that we want to be, um, you know, sort of putting out there in terms of America's favorite pastime. We want to make sure that baseball is accessible to everyone. And I think everybody in this room has seen, if you've come to a game uh, here, just how accessible uh, it is. So um, there's going to be a lot more to come in uh, in the coming days, I would imagine. We've been on a two, a little more than a two week um, uh, break from Washington, but I'm eager to get down there for a multitude of reasons. But this is definitely, uh, definitely one of them, so that the task force can get together and talk about um, next steps. Uh, but with that, I think it would be great if we could hear from uh, from the Spinners ownership. Um, uh, I have to say, and I'll just reiterate that Dave Heller has been terrific. Uh, he's been on the ground. Uh, down in Washington, he's been uh, at the winter meetings, uh, and he's been, um, you know, really involved in kind of helping build this this coalition um, down in down in Washington, and frankly across uh, the country. But uh, but Sean is here. Um, he's here as the general manager of the Spinners. He's been uh, here from ninth. From 19, since 1997, off and on from 96, yeah. <laughs> um, and his vast baseball experience inclu includes serving as both the president and general manager for minor league teams within the Boston Red Sox, the Toronto Blue Jays, and the Houston Astros organizations. <coughs> and with those teams, he's been deeply involved in the construction and the management of of five ballparks. Uh, and so we thank you for being here, and uh, we'd love for you to share with us what you all, what you know. Well, first of all, thank you, Congresswoman, and thank you to everybody in this room. Um, as the Congresswoman mentioned, I started here on November 4th of 1996, and I've come back in a couple iterations. Um, and I think as, as Senator Kennedy really brought out that we can all accomplish a lot of great things when we're together, but one thing that's really special about this room is that we're all friends. <laughs> and. I'm proud to call many of you my friends that I've known and those friendships that I'm starting. Uh, a couple friends that I'd like to introduce that are very important. Brian Lindsay, where'd Brian go? Brian has been with the organization since it started. 
when it moved here in 1996. Uh, Jamie Arthur is our assistant general manager. And Chancellor Maloney mentioned something very special about our relationship. Peter Casey, who's the athletic director, Peter and I have known each other off and on for 20 years. Uh, the relationship that we have is a friendship. The relationship with the coaching staff is a friendship. The relationship with the athletic department is a friendship. And one great thing about being friends is you can certainly have some tough love when you're all going towards a common goal. And the City Bowl really embodies that. Uh, on behalf of Dave Heller, you know, Dave is, his flight got canceled. He's coming here a little bit late, so he certainly apologizes. But just a little background on Dave. So Dave owns four teams. Three of them are affected by this. Dave Heller is on the strategy committee for minor league baseball, and Dave Heller is also on the board of trustees for minor league baseball. So Dave is, has a seat at the table along with his partners on the minor league side as well with the major league side. So you couldn't ask for a better representative of what we have been developed here for the past 25 seasons in the city of Lowell in conjunction with all of you in this room. Uh, if you take a look back 30 years ago, the vision that everyone in this room has had, and certainly the late Senator Paul Songus and Nikki Songus, coming together with the National Park Service, coming together with not only what UMass Lowell has been able to accomplish, but Middlesex Community College, the over 1,500 artisans and what we have over at Mill Number 5, what we have with the Songus Arena, and the private-public partnership that we have, that we all have the same goal, and this is where I'll start my denouement. Our goal and our job and our focus in serving this community is to bring people from the surrounding communities, like Representative Golden mentioned, the vast majority of our fans come from outside the city of Lowell, from these very affluent communities that come and spend money in this community. It's our job to let them see we have a summer music series, Peter. It's our job to let them see the great safe community that we have here. <coughs> And it's important that everyone sees the great assets that are available to them, beautiful brand new courthouse that we're opening. For us to do our jobs, it's in, in, in us doing our jobs, it's to serve you. It's not to serve us, it's to serve you. So it's tremendously um, valuable to us to see the reaction that we're getting here um, for us to be able to continue to do our jobs for this community. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Congresswoman Trahan, for doing this. It's not often I agree with Mr. Campanini, but <laughs> <laughs> on this I'm going to have to agree. Uh, during the last month of my mayorship, I started receiving phone calls and letters from mayors of other communities. And uh, several spoke to me in this, on this, in this manner in the sense of if they lost their minor league team, it would be devastating for the economy of, of their community. Because we're talking about towns, we're talking about some cities that really don't have the university, the, the community college, and all that Lowell has to offer. So minor league baseball is what they have to offer. So they were asking my, you know, me as to what was going on in, the, in our community and how could we work together as a community. And I think Mr. Campanini is correct. That's where you'll get the work. <coughs> and uh, you know, how can you help us put this together? We're willing to do this. We're willing to work as a, a, a community, but how can you help us get our voice tied together with the other 40 uh, communities that will suffer this loss? Yeah, no, those are those are great suggestions. In fact, uh, you know, we often say millions of fans will be impacted, uh, but capturing those millions through, uh, you know, a petition um, drive or something along those lines, it isn't just, uh, you know, here, but across the country. Uh, is a great idea and so you know perhaps we can put together you know some um, you know working group uh, on on that because it's um, you know part of this is also getting you know the word out uh, you know not many people know um, that or I shouldn't say not many people but not everyone knows um, that you know this this is not it's certainly not happening this year but it, <coughs> it would take effect next year uh, and I think folks um, uh, would really get involved in making sure that their voices were heard uh, if they if they understood the stakes. Um, and, and sometimes the winter meetings and the MLB and minor league negotiations can seem far, far away, um, and that, that distance isn't actually as great as folks think. And that's an excellent point. Um, we've gotten a lot of emails, text, social media messages. I was in Market Basket by Alumni Field last night. <coughs> we're a former person that worked with the city here for a long time. They've all come and said, sorry this is your last year so they've already started to write this off so if we have a bad 2020 it makes it a very difficult case to argue for 21 2021 and beyond 
So unfortunately, you have people that don't know and people that think that this is a fait accompli when nothing could be further from the truth. There are business partners that have already started to say, eh. there's been season ticket holders that have already started to say, eh. so these comments have had an effect on our business. And um, you know, when the, the, the manager mentions our, our partnership, we know that one great thing we have is we make a phone call and either way, uh, the manager and her staff are saying, what can we do? And on the flip side, we say the same thing. Uh, that is a tremendous asset, tremendous strength that we have there, that the Boston Red Sox know this community. The Boston Red Sox know how well we serve them. The Boston Red Sox know how great this facility is. And the Boston Red Sox understand that we all care about them and care about our fans. So the more that we can use that as part of the unifying message to dispel these, what they are, rumors right now, it's going to help us going forward. So how do we knock those rumors down? Terrific. Terrific. John. Thank you. And Sean, to your point, I understand that. The Boston Red Sox know this, the Boston Red Sox know that. I get it. However, Councilman Drinkwater just mentioned that he's one of the, the Boston ownership is one of the 30 teams that approve this. So I think it behooves us to get a team together, and certainly it'd be great if we could get everybody together and, you know, go sit in front of John Henry and some of these people and, and say, why did you approve this? I, I'd like to understand. If 30 owners approve this deal in their minds, there must be some kind of a benefit to them. A, I'd like to know what the benefit is. I'd like to know what the problem is with Major League, you know, the baseball. Uh, I'd like to know what, they, what, is their, what is their problem with us. If you read the second page of this, it's unbelievable what this organization does. I don't understand what the problem <coughs> is. I'd like to know A, what the problem is, B, what their benefits are, by letting this happen and see, is there a way for us to change, at least in Boston? Is there a way for us, Sean, and you know, Congresswoman, is there a way for us to change their mind? And we'd like to know those answers too, John. And you know, we have the same questions we all do. We just don't know the answers to any of those questions, which kind of makes it even more alarming. Yeah. I mean, I, I know it sounds far-fetched, but does not. the city manager and the Congresswoman have it? or the state senator have availability to sit in front of someone from MLB? Is there anybody here from MLB? To, to your point, and, and I think it's a point well taken, you know, last summer the delegation and myself went down and we met with representatives from the Red Sox. This was in advance of this announcement in October, and our sole purpose was to gain assurance from the Red Sox that they were going to extend the player agreement with the spinners, um, and uh, we were given assurances that they had every intention of doing that. So the player agreement runs out coincidentally in, in the end of 2020, this playing season. And so before this you know, came on the horizon, we were already in discussions with them on behalf of the city and the spinners to, to advocate how important the spinners were. Uh, and so this is yet another chapter, a really critical chapter that came about in the fall. And uh, we certainly, uh, I, I know, I think I can speak for everybody because everybody yeah. was willing, ready, and able to go down to Boston and meet with them and we can do that again. Yeah, Tommy and, and yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, this is, uh, this is, um, this group represents, you know, a very much coordinated and um, uh, committed group. Um, and so, you know, meeting, uh, Meeting with the uh, the Red Sox, who we've had a great partnership with, is, uh, is definitely something that we're going uh, to explore, just to make sure that we get to emphasize that uh, Lowell has always been a place that uh, it's a it's a great place to invest because we um, we invest alongside uh, folks who come here uh, to make sure that they have the infrastructure and they have the things that they need to make. Um, you know, to, to have a successful product or service here. And so I know I'm joined with a lot of folks who are very committed to that. Uh, but you bring up a good point, and part of it is sequencing, right? I mean, right now this is happening, um, you know, in meetings in Florida and elsewhere, um, but we're, we're, uh, we're fully committed to making sure that we have all necessary conversations to, to ensure that the spinners stay put. Congressman, thank you. Thank you. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my name is Matt Lasher. Um, my grandfather, as, as Representative Golden had mentioned, was so instrumental in pulling this together. And 
my family and all the other families throughout the area have been blessed to have this um, you know, as part of our lives. Um, and I think it's those families and to what uh, Jim had said earlier that can be one of the ways that we can leverage this. Um, the Major League Baseball, like every other business, and I started out in the sports industry, uh, Major League Baseball is worried about money and making money. And the children that come to the games like this are their future uh, you know, individuals to buy their tickets and buy the hats and, uh, and love Mookie Betts and all that comes along those lines. And uh, as Jim was mentioning, a website, uh, but Facebook page, Instagram, yeah. youth baseball <coughs> leagues, getting uh, pictures of kids who are holding pictures, signs save our spinners yeah. from all around the country. Those pictures can travel. And the, the message that this is why we love baseball, don't take our baseball away, if that becomes from the children as opposed to from the politicians or from Washington, yep. if the children are the ones who are speaking saying, don't take baseball away from us, I think it's a message that, that resonates really well across I all Nigeria. So. We can start with the little lasher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've got them. Yeah. And I think also, just to the final point, to Senator Kennedy's uh, statement, this is the first of what might be two battles. So hopefully this, we are successful, but you can quickly pivot that to keeping the Red Sox here as well with a campaign similarly if, you know, once we, we flush it out. You bet. So. You bet. Absolutely. Uh, and I think one, they dovetail, right? I mean, one sort of reinforces the other. If when folks see, uh, you know, the commitment on behalf of the community and the families and the season ticket holders and all the stakeholders, I think uh, it just reinforces um, the other. Uh, but we will be looking um, for, you know, on the ground help. Uh, in mobilizing, um, you know, families and season ticket holders and, um, you know, little league teams uh, and all of those, uh, those folks. I think that uh, we've had great success in organizing, you know, the governors and the members and the, um, the state and local, even, you know, the, lo the, lo the mayors that are impacted, you know, all of those are really important, but nothing uh, will be more powerful um, than, you know, viral campaigns from families and young and young kids. Um, and I say that, and my sister, uh, it drives her crazy whenever I remind the world that, you know, my youngest sister was the canaligator. Uh, <laughs> so I, I'm trying to get her to put that uniform back on, but she just had our, uh, our, uh, youngest niece uh, a week ago, so I'm sure she's going to say no. Uh, but, uh, but I really want to thank everybody uh, for coming. You know, you gave us many ideas uh, in terms of what we can do going forward, but certainly this is an ongoing conversation and an ongoing campaign uh, by all of us. Uh, and so we'll be uh, reaching out um, to, uh, to try to formalize um, and, you know, uh, come up with some concrete uh, next steps, but I just wanted to say thank you all. Oops, please. If, if I could, I, um, before we close, which yeah. it sounds like we're going to yeah. do in a couple of minutes, but I think that uh, John Chimley's idea is a, is a great idea. I think that you know we should continue to have a dialogue with the Boston Red Sox over this. I think that if we can bring letters from the business community and uh, a million signatures on a petition, that that all helps. But that's that's one of the 32 teams. I think what we really need to do, and this is something that um, that your office would need yep. to do would be to to have other do that to other teams yep. so that we're, we're, we're doing that across the country um, and, and get that same type of enthusiasm for minor league baseball uh, just show that to all of the major league teams across the country or as many as we can and I think that that's worthwhile and that's sort of a, a macro way of, of what we're doing here in, in Lowell that would be a, a, a much better thing but I think it could be effective if we uh, <coughs> Job with it. You bet. You bet. And that, I'll bring this back to the task force this week um, so that we can multiply it by 42. Mm -hmm. so, Congressman, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't offer a cheap plug for our organization. Um, just some quick information you have in front of you. So, you know, we've asked ourselves in starting this process with you all as teammates, what can we do? What, what can we be doing better for our fans and our communities? Um, and as prices continue to go up everywhere and there's greater economic challenges, we're trying to provide more value to the fan than ever before. This all-you-can-eat concept for our corporate season ticket holders, it's now you're not just giving people tickets to a game, you're giving them, and a great night out, you're giving them food, all-you-can-eat food. So for less than the price of a ticket to a game, that night of the game, and one combo meal, you can eat to your heart's content. 
So we're taking a look financially. You know, we want to make this a volume game for us, and we're going to take some steps back to take some steps forward. The second thing, and this being our 25th season, we're rolling back our reserve ticket prices to the 1998 price of $4. So we're going to be unveiling that. We want to let people know that not only are we thankful for them, but it can continue to be unbelievably affordable for people of all economic backgrounds and needs to be able to come enjoy a great night out in our community. So there's just some information there as well as our schedule for the upcoming season. Awesome. So to piggyback on some of the ideas too, uh, Dr. Boyd's here, you know, we can involve the public schools. There'd be a lot of letters and um, mm -hmm. drawings or whatever we want to do that we could send out. So we can always check Terrific. on that. That's so great. Thank you. And um, Sean, you just lost money on the left. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just want to take a, uh, a moment to recognize our, our arena or the Civic Stadium commissioners who are here, Margie Miller, who's the chair, others, uh, Bell, John, uh, I hope I'm not missing anybody, but they Adam. were Patty, <laughs> Adam. Uh, see, I knew I'd miss, but you know, the, this, this is this is evidence of the joint effort, the partnership that's been in existence since the get-go, and that is the city and the university working together for this facility. So thank you all for being here, and of course our chief of police. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you for coming. Um, and meeting is adjourned. <laughs>